and then I have to head off. This is the Build OGM call for Tuesday, December 14th, 2021. My first action will be to apologize and boogie to a different call where I am. I have been beckoned to do some work this morning. So my apologies and uh, feel free to close this call whenever you're done with whatever you need to talk about. And thank you. Uh, have a good one. All right. Ooh. Ooh, good morning. Hey. Um, how you doing? Oops. Doing good. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I have a funny uh, procrastination story. Um, I've, I've had this like client work I was supposed to do over the weekend and procrastinated through the weekend and then procrastinated until 6 p.m. last night um, and then did six hours of work more or less so and and i get up early you know i get up at like 4 30 or something like that so i oh, got wow. up by my regular time so i'm not enough sleep but but still happy i got my work done <laughs> kind of that is good at least at least uh it worked <laughs> the, the time when i was uh bumping library versions and changing the copyright date on uh, an old package i wrote you know that that hasn't been updated for, for two years i'm like okay Pete. <laughs> this is like rock bottom of procrastination <laughs> this code does not need to be touched today but there's a whole you know i was like oh my god it's the code that runs i've got a um i've got a color light that rotates colors um, with the JavaScript, you know, a, a cool web page JavaScript thing that I wrote. It's like, but I can't, you know, my my little kid, but I can't work without my color light, like, you know, rotating and stuff, you know, <laughs> come on, kid. So I think it turned out not to be the library at bump. It was uh, the fact that um, it, it looks like it doesn't run from the web anymore. You have to actually have it as a local file, some kind of cross site, you know, thing. Anyway, every time every time this happens to me, there's a there's a apocryphal, um, not apocryphal, but a story, you know, a Silicon Valley story from the olden days, the '70s or something like that, where I think it was the guy who invented Ethernet or something. I don't know, um, but like they had a shipping deadline, right? And and the product isn't quite done. It's not quite done. It's not quite done. And then like the the last day, um, the the person, the lead inventor, <clears throat> the company founder, um, decides that he has to figure out the physics of um, getting a pencil to stick in the acoustic tile. So he's got <laughs> pencils and he's throwing them up. <laughs> and everybody comes into the room and is like, oh my God, you know, because if you do anything, it's not going to speed him up, right? You have to kind of let him get through his pencil throwing exercise. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. <laughs> oh. Well, um inventor of ethernet if i remember correctly is bob metcalf but other yeah. than, um, uh, i'm throwing pencils in my brain <laughs> at the moment i'm not quite awake um well uh yeah my, my procrastination skills are are you know up there too so i i, I share i i I can imagine your feeling and it's some kind of um, it's some kind of ADD thing or something, you know. And and also like the time piece of well, there's plenty of time to do X thing. I know because I've done it before and your memory of how long it took you to do it in in a pinch the previous time is optimistic as it is and but but it means that you can leave ever less time to do the thing that you need to do yeah. as you go through life you get, you get uh, optimally uh yeah yeah your 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 all-time personal record becomes your kind of mental average yeah <laughs> um i the, the funny thing is it was a low, pretty low pressure you know it's just another milestone we're getting i think part of it is we're getting close to the end of the project and it's it's finally getting like finished you know and i don't like to finish projects apparently so you know it's kind of heavy heart it's like oh my god i'm not gonna be able to work on this anymore because it's gonna be all done and i don't know it's weird um 
just today I, I was, I I was uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, another, another, this is an odd thing to share kind of, but it's not, um, uh, I don't know if y'all know Adam Neely, um, uh, Adam Neely, oh. uh, Michael, you and I are doing a crappy job of keeping up on our music, amazing music stuff together. I don't know why that is. But anyway, Adam Neely is, is one of the YouTube music people that I really enjoy watching. He's a, a very good music analyst. Uh, he's also a jazz musician and um, he's, he, he does a, a number of kind of interesting kinds of episodes in his life. This one is really interesting. Um, it's him saying, okay, there's this feeling that, you know, you have this like big show coming up and you do all the prep and you do all the like, you know, and he's doing it with a, with a whole uh, jazz ensemble, a big one, you know? <laughs> um, so he's like weeks and weeks of like prep and major prep and, and working on all the details and fretting about how it's, you know, needs to be perfect, even though the audience doesn't really care too much. It's absolutely perfect. And, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then you do the show and it's, and, and he talks about this asymptotic kind of like stress, you know, um, uh, he's got, uh, he podcasts him getting prepped for the show and then, then during the show, um, this asymptotic, you know, like, okay, it's five, you know, the five minute curtain call, you know, where's all, you know, who's, where's this person, you know, are we ready for this? Are we, we got the, you know, and then you do the show and it goes pretty well, you know, and then after the show, so the whole video is about the, after the show feeling, it's like, kind of a like a letdown you know it's like ah you know so the title of this is every musician deals with this and i think it's interesting that he projects that i think that's not actually true we all have our different stress things and things like that and i'm sure many musicians feel like this or and he's he kind of mentions you know this is kind of like when you're doing a big you know you're you're presenting your paper or something like that or as jerry says um uh, April right now is on stage at NASA uh, doing a keynote, um, you know, um, so I, I think not everybody ends up with that peak and then that kind of depression. It's for him, it's actually depression and he goes through days or weeks of, you know, like, you know, now I don't have that thing I was like so stressed out about and, you know, went okay, you know. Hey, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. I totally meant for this to be a takeover where we actually got work done and I'm yeah. totally blowing it. Well, I was going to ask just because I, I don't think I've, I mean, I think it's been a few weeks since I've been to one of these Tuesday um, sessions, you know, where it, my observation really is that we do more weaving the world ops work on this call and less on tomorrow's weaving the world ops mm. call. The, the, the role of the, the call has kind of switched in my head at least. Yeah. But. Are there, I mean, if in your, in your fantasy of the, of the work that we would do on this call, um, what was it that we were <laughs> working on talking about? Anything particular? <laughs> um, uh, hey, Mark Antoine. Okay. Um, we were just about to talk about what we would be working on if we were actually working on something. And I was going to go off on that digression, but now I'm, I'm embarrassed because there's an adult in the room. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, uh, just if you guys, guys didn't know, Jerry um, had was called away um, at the last Oh, minute. yeah, yeah. yeah so I kind of assumed everybody knew that, but yeah. Sorry, Mark Antoine, I don't mean to call you an adult. I apologize. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you always seem like more put together and more professional and more, I don't know, more smart than I do. I get a little bit. And Pete, I will take as a compliment the fact that there wasn't an adult in the room until Mark Antoine <laughs> <Yeah>, Really? <laughs> I, I, I don't know how I should take it, but oh well. <laughs> I think it, it's, it's maybe an order of things. I think each of us could be considered an adult, you know, depending on, you know, but. On which order we showed up in. Yeah. And, and how juvenile the conversation we walked in on was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. How much I was getting away with, with uh, procrastinating. Uh, no, tell me. I've been uh, playing with my DMX install. Awesome. 
Um, very interesting. Uh, they're using Neo4j as a data store in San Lucy. I didn't realize it was Neo4j underneath. I, I should have. Um, so DMX, this conversation comes out of Flotilla. Um, and if you were in the, if you wanted to, you could scroll back in the Flotilla channel a little bit. We're talking about graph visualization. But basically, somebody finally did a serious, um, not a serious, but you know. A, real. A real, yeah. A an, real, an adult. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was wondering if that's what you were referring to with adult in the room, as in I'm yeah. actually starting to play with it yeah. uh, in reference to DMX. Uh, it's, it's a topic map database, basically. Uh, it's built atop uh neo4j but it's the data model is full topic map which means each uh, relationship is accessible has roles yada 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 um so look at dmx that read the docs it's not very hard to install i've installed it on my machine but it's uh, being a bit bitchy to configure because I don't see any affordance to create users. They say, oh, use the LDAP server. So I install the LDAP server on my machine. Uh, <laughs> yay. And uh, I'm not getting DMX to talk to my LDAP server yet. So that's why I was a bit late. I'm still fiddling with that config. This is, uh, this is where you need a, a, a Docker Compose thing. Uh, I absolutely don't want to do this with Docker. <laughs> Well, somebody else, the, the, the thing to do is when somebody else has set up the Docker Compose for you, right? Once yeah. it's like three or four services, you go, okay. No. But anyway, um, it's still, I'm pretty happy the fact by, with the fact that it works. It works not that badly. Uh, I need to play with the database a bit more. It seems to leak all kinds of information, which I'm not happy about. Uh, I need to restrict like, oh, let me show you the file system of the, ho of the host machine. But that's because I'm in as admin, right? So I'm not going to give my admin credentials, hence getting the user system to work with appropriate permissions before I start getting you all to play on it. <laughs> <laughs> But sounds awesome. Thanks for thanks for starting to set it up. I should probably look in the uh, Mattermost, but all I'm getting is a wrapper did at 50 on Google. Okay. As I said, look at DMX read the docs.io. Uh, oh yeah, the hack MD wouldn't hurt. Yeah, I could put it there. Well, I just made one, so. And there's there's another there's a DMX home. What is it again? Uh, preface. Something really obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DMX. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, now there's a DMXconversions.com, and I'm still working on making securing stuff. So please don't hit it too hard. <laughs> DMX. It's, it's yeah. Nope. That's it. It's, that's a little bit of obscure, actually. Yeah, that's the one. And by the way, it's open source. Uh, it's uh, one second. I'll give you the, that URL. It's Slack. Uh, Zoom. It absolutely requires Java eight. <laughs> Whatever. Uh oh, that means log for J. <laughs> that probably means log for J. Yes, it doesn't. I don't see log for J in the jars. Doesn't All mean right. it's not there. It could have been wrapped in. But yes, that's definitely a concern. Stacy, I'm lost too. Just so, just so you. <laughs> we are nerding out a tiny bit. Um, there's a uh, exploit in a file that's used by many, many, many Java programs um, uh, that does logging. And that's the big news among people who pay attention to software is that, um, you know, right when you think, oh, you know, we can relax for the holidays. It's like, we have to look at all of our systems and find out, you know, if 
uh, basically, you know, they can be taken over by eight year olds who can click a button, you know, exploit this server and um, basically take over the complete server <laughs> and, and all, all the all the software on it and wreak havoc in the world. So, so, so then there's an exploit that takes advantage of that hole that goes in and all it does is patch the hole. Exactly. Makes it so Which is kind of funny. So, so then, um, I, and I just put it in chat, um, somebody on Twitter said, by the way, if you're checking your system and it's patched, make sure you're the one who patched it because the exploit that patched it may have been friendly or it may not have been friendly. And, and you might go, oh, it's, it's okay. I, I don't have to upgrade anything. And somebody's upgraded it for you and left a hole for themselves, not anybody else. So I don't see any trace of log4j in any of the um, libraries. Mm. Nope, log4j is not at all in that stack. You'll be happy to know. I did have a Fuziki install with an old log4j, which I updated. I had a Woost install with an old log4j, which I don't know how to update, so I just disabled it for now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this was a fun morning. <laughs> and I found a DMX Docker container. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so they're out there. You gonna trust it? Yeah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I I would probably trust it. Yeah, it's written by Jurgen at DMX Systems. So yeah. boy, Jurgen knows what he's doing or she. Um hmm. that, but then the real thing you want is a Docker Compose thing that's got uh, uh that's that's got the LDAP server and whatever else it needs. Uh, okay, uh, let's come back from Techland, and and uh, so I had I do have kind of a OGM thing I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, unfortunately, it's actually kind of a tech thing too. But um, maybe should we talk uh, other other OGM topics on top of mind for anybody? Not yet. Um, again, I'm putting together a, um, what is it, idea graph, memex, um, intelligence yeah. amplification meetup on Saturday. And um, I have been, um, Stacy and Mark Antoine, you might have missed the earlier theme of the call, which was procrastination. But um, <laughs> I've, uh, there's a uh, Facebook. Um, group that we used to meet on, but nobody, nobody's on Facebook anymore. Um, so I'm not sure how many people are going to show up. Nobody's uh, um, connecting, but uh, yeah, God, I'm putting together a Zoom uh, call for the first time and managing a Zoom call. So yeah, it's just. Do you, have, uh, um, and try. Do, you have, do you have someplace? Well, uh, so you should do uh, at channel somewhere on Mattermost, and you should also post to the OGM mailing list. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good idea. Um, I don't know. That's probably good enough for OGM. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I've got tons of work, tons of reading, and uh, um, I have to reread Essentialism. I think that's essential. <laughs> so <I> can, <laughs> or, or get coaching from uh, Stacy. They're like, okay, focus on this. <laughs> oh, I would love to do that. It's so great telling, you know, like I'm, this is my nature. And I'm sure you all could understand <laughs> men in your life don't usually like that. <laughs> No, no, so to not have at somebody all. that wants that is awesome. <laughs> there's two, there's two points of, uh, of, uh, uh, at least knowledge that I've come across. Um, one is the Chinese um, saying, marry a smart woman, a woman smarter than you and does ev do everything she tells you to and that you will have the happiest life. <laughs> the other is, um, I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an inventor and I'm, I'm a finder, I'm, I'm all over the place. And um, 
I was talking to a, a partner who I shared an office with and um, I said, yeah, um, sure. I, I would love to be managed, you know, manage me. And he goes, you want to be my bitch? And I go, sure. <laughs> so, um, we'll talk later, Stacy. <laughs> oh, thanks. <clears throat> anyway, I'm here waking up and listening mostly, but that's what I'm attempting to do. Um, in an OGME kind of area, not specifically connected to OGM. Um, Stacy's doing a bang up job of uh, helping uh, Jerry manage getting stuff done. So thank you, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, my, my OGM thing is actually uh, inspired by a conversation Stacy and I had. Um, I, I keep wanting to do this and sooner or later maybe, maybe it will happen uh, to have a community currency for OGM and I would do it with a cryptocurrency, um, which is probably the third or fourth best way to do it. It's not the best way to do it. Um, the best way to do it um, from Michael Linton, um, the person himself. Uh, uh, is is actually to use a, a really simple uh, ledger program that basically lets you you know um, uh, ledge uh, to to make a verb out of that um, keep track of you know credits and debits um, however however that goes but I I really want to do it with crypto instead so then the the tricky part is I don't want to do it proof of stake I want to do it proof of work. Sorry, I don't, I don't want to do a proof of work. I want to do a proof of stake. Um, so all the, the easy to create uh, tokens, I think, are um, on Ethereum um, and not on something else like Tezos or, or, or Cosmos or I don't. And, and uh, just today I saw somebody, uh, Solana might be, it might be something. I don't know, I'll have to go look. But anyway, so there's a trade-off I'm, I'm inspired a little bit by our friends um, uh, at Good Workhouse um, who had the experience of um, kind of a, a, a related thing for them, a sibling thing for them. Um, they had a physical gallery uh, in Venice, California. Um, and before NFTs were big, <laughs> I don't know how this happened that they decided to do this, but before NFTs were big, um, they were giving um, NFT to anybody who came in the shop. Um, uh, I, this, this makes sense if you're thinking in Venice mindset that you would just go, oh, I think these people wandering around the boardwalk need an NFT in their life because they don't have enough crazy stuff going on. This is such a, you know, Hollywood, West Hollywood, Venice, Santa Monica kind of thing. It actually kind of makes sense there. Um, but only if I put my, put my brain in Santa Monica. Um, anyway, so one of the people involved was explaining this to me and he's like, okay, so I was there, Pete, when <laughs> literally you kind of grab somebody off the, the, the sidewalk by the lapel and like, you want, to, you want to be in Web3, you want to be decentralized, you want an NFT, let me see your phone, I'm going to put MetaMask on it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's just insane talk, right? And um, I'm starting a collection of cartoons where people, um, obnoxious Web3 people come over and say, you want to be part of Web3, you want to be decentralized, because it's, it's, a, it's a trope, you know, it's a meme, it's, a, it's, it's funny as hell and, and sad as hell. Um, but anyway, um, you know, sometime later, not too long later, a month or two or something like that, um, crypto Venetians, the, the, they were little cartoons of uh, Venice beach bums, basically, on the boardwalk. Very, very low pixel, you know, very low res um, and cute and a series like crypto apes or whatever. A um, uh, couple months later, they're on the market, they're going for $10,000 each, right? Uh, so you happen to walk in, you know, your beach bum walking or uh, socialite or whatever, or, or an artist or a surfer walking into a random art gallery in Venice Beach, and they give you this thing that looks like a piece of junk, and later you find out that you could sell it for $10,000. It's like, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, so the part of this that inspires me is not so much the, and it's worth $10,000 part, because that's 
that's um, a little bit of speculation, a lot of luck and all that kind of stuff. That, that part I don't care about too much. The really interesting part for me was that they were successful in giving away a bunch of digital NFTs before people knew what they were. And, you know, before you know, these are regular people off, literally off the street. Um, so coming back to OGM, um, I think many of us would like to have a community currency. Um, I, I think many of us wouldn't like it to be a cryptocurrency, but I'm kind of inspired by uh, that art gallery that, you know, maybe it's doable at least and, and might be a good thing. So basically, why? It's a really good question. Um, it's actually a really good question. Thanks, Mark. Um, the thing I was hoping to, to get was for somebody to say, Pete, just do it the way Michael Linton says. It's, that makes a lot more sense. Um, I don't want to do it Michael Linton's way because it's um, pedestrian and boring. Um, even though it's, it's better, I know it's better. Um, the reason to have a community currency is because a, a couple things. Um, uh, uh, put yourself in the context of Stacy and I talking about weaving the world ops, um, or put yourself in the context of a flotilla call. Um, uh, Stacy said something really interesting uh, where she said it would be cool if participants in these little work groups like Build OGM or Flotilla or Weaving, Weaving the World, maybe they could get something of value just for showing up. Um, kind of like, and, and I said, kind of like a universal basic income. And it's like, yeah, that's actually kind of interesting. Um, imagine we had an OGM currency, or actually, I think it's not an OGM currency. I call it Plex. Um, I think it's Supra OGM, um, which is one of the things we could discuss. But um, uh, the, the big thing is uh, Jerry could say, you know, okay, I've got some money to pay for Weaving the World Ops. I, I've got some money to pay for, you know, somebody to spend four hours transcribing an hour video as kind of an experiment on, you know, many people's parts. Um, I have, you know, um, I, I, Jerry could say something like, I need some art, art done. For, I need some, uh, some web design done. Um, you know, graphic design for a website. Uh, I need um, a logo uh, for Weaving the World. Uh, Stacy's uh, Stacy's <laughs> example was uh, it would be really cool if we had uh, some some people that actually did. Um, uh, I, I'm going to say editing, but I don't mean um, moving text around. I mean actually improving the flow of text um, and you know up up leveling the the um the intelligence of, of a piece of text there's a bunch of stuff that we could be doing and we actually kind of do for each other um but we also we i bump into we we all bump into the well it would be nice to at least kind of keep score a little bit you know and it doesn't it doesn't have to be like you know dollars and cents and and you know uh, I got to account for every minute or something like that. It it would be super cool if it were a little bit more flexible than that, a little bit more qualitative, a little bit more friendly, um, a little bit more goofy maybe, um, which is where I'm maybe going with my cryptocurrency wish. But um, but if we had a community currency. Um, and then, especially if it were a Supra OGM thing, uh, you know, uh, maybe we could get uh, somebody from Metacogs to participate in an OGM thing. Um, even though they kind of live in Metacogs, you know, they wouldn't mind coming over to OGM and, you know, um, uh, like my daughter used to do uh, when she was nine years old playing um, uh, Animal, For Animal Forest, um, shoot, the uh, Nintendo game on your Switch. Um, uh, she, she would go over to other people's, uh, games and mow their lawns and, and she would get paid a little bit for that. Um, and then she would buy cool stuff with it and then they, they would have their lawn kept up. So, you know, Tom Nook was not, not upset at them or whatever. Um, 
if we'd had a little bit of, you know, back and forth uh, social economy, it would be a good and wonderful thing. Um, and then the part of the experiment is how do you make it so it's not a capitalist dungeon uh, like we've invented in the real world? You know, how do you do um, a friendly social economy um, with somebody keeping a little bit of score or maybe a lot of score? Um, I, I don't think that the amount of the scoriness is the big thing. It's actually the social gestures that you want to kind of um, uh, invent around the, the exchanges. Um, you know, it'd, it'd be a good thing to experiment with. So that's, that's the why. And Not that I've back, thought about it Not that much. <laughs> getting back to what you said about um, Good Works, which I haven't watched that yet, but that's the reason to give it away first. You know, that's the, you know, then there's that engagement. Um, yes. And um, it's, it's also a bootstrap thing. Um, uh, once you have a little bit of, of economy going and you get the rules of the game, um, you can go to, you can go to the, you can go to a market where you can say, hey, maybe you don't know us very well. But we've got a we've got a social good project here, and if you um, I, basically you can you can help fund uh, your your good work by selling some of your your tokens to somebody for real dollars, right? Um, uh, if you if you get somebody to buy a bunch of tokens for $10,000 then, and you start to get a market starting to become liquid. So now, now I know why I'm not so much interested in Michael Linton's ledger thing. It's a, the, the thing I'm interested in is um, um, a, a, a complementary currency, a, a local exchange economy, but also with a connection to fiat. Um, so then somebody who earns, um, uh, you know, um, a thousand Plex tokens, which are worth $50 in, in US dollars, um, they might say, well, I'm going to keep half of those because, um, because I want to spend them and I want to keep them inside the, the community, but I'm also going to cash half of them out and, you know, and pay for, for this week's, um, uh, meals or something like that, right? Um, so I guess, th thank you for walking me around to why I want to connect this, why I want to do crypto and why I want, and, and that I want to connect it to fiat. Um, so this is, you know, and, and you can bootstrap up from let's do a little experiment with our friends to let's do this a little bit more real. So where Good Work House is now, um, tomorrow, I think it is, tomorrow is, uh, they're doing a, a launch of their community project where they said they've bootstrapped a couple steps and they also had an in real life um, IRL, um, kind of like a next gen Rotary Club uh, in Santa Monica or Venice where they were already doing good stuff a couple years ago um, before, the, before the pandemic. Um, so they, they've got a social club that does good stuff you know, for the community. Um, the project that they've got going now is let's raise um, 250 ETH, uh, which is equal to about a million dollars. Let's take that, that money and uh, do um, reasonably sized grants to uh, Haitian artists. I think they can afford about 60 grants. Um, and they're going to be no strings attached. You know, here's a grant. Here's a few thousand dollars um, worth of ETH, which they can turn into whatever they want um, to 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 do you. You know, you do you. Um, uh, we we recognize you as an artist. We want you to be an artist in residence uh, virtually, and we want you to do some cool stuff. Um, and if you had a couple thousand dollars, uh, we hope that it would make your cool stuff easier to do. Um, so they're taking half of the, the million dollars or so raised um, and putting it directly to grants. They're putting another 10% of that to um, a multi-sig wallet uh, for those artists and residents to distribute further into the Haitian um, environment. Um, and then 
they're keeping 40% of it to do their operations of that stuff and then to run some of their other good stuff, you know? So um, uh, they've been doing, you know, they've been bootstrapping for a year. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's not lost on me that OGM has been bootstrapping for you know a year and a half or whatever, um, and I'm I'm a little bent out of shape that um, you know OGM uh, OGM has the potential to do this kind of stuff and we're failing to achieve it I, is maybe a harsh way to think about it, but it feels that way some, to me sometimes. I really like that um, you mentioned in real life and then added IRL as if we didn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, Pete. Um, <laughs> the, the friend we have. Uh, it's for our viewers. Okay. Yeah, I just Jesse, the the friend, uh, you know, the friend that Jerry and I have uh, over at Good Work. Uh, he's always saying I, he's he's uh, he's got a notch ahead of the lingo, right? And so, I've I've said IRL to some people in the OGM sphere, and it's like, what's that? Um, so the other interesting thing, just watching him do his stuff on Discord, um, he says IRL or URL. So where I would say web, he says URL because it matches IRL well. And it's like, I like that. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> uh, Michael, you're Michael. muted. Sorry, I just said unreal life <laughs> that's even better yes right. unreal right, cool. engine yeah um, so pete you all this stuff I, I i understand but the thing that stirs me the most is the you know next to the last thing you said about huh here's an example of people getting stuff done in the world that's interesting and as OGM, you know, it's, it's not quite um, as interesting as that, and you would like it to be. Um, mm, now, mapping that problem to, or mapping that, maybe not problem, but opportunity or, or aspiration to cryptocurrency is not within my, it's not, you know, certainly not my central interest, um, but, you know, willing to go along and play with the community that is developing. Although um, to kind of understand the community, I mean, we all see each other a couple of times a week and well, there's few others. Um, there are a few others, but but few, rather than you know ten more, which would probably be you know a good quorum about fifteen people. We can kind of decide, hey, let's coalesce and choose a project, work on that project, assign roles. Um, I, you know, we're small enough so that we can basically see other people you know, doing that work and kind of like give them beams from our hearts or, you know, big smiles or, or what have you. Um, and I don't see or even different feel how cryptocurrency could add to the kind of coalescence that you're looking for because I'm looking for leadership um, plans, um, goals, objectives, time frames, uh, and, and in a sense, we're playing, and that's good. And you know, I I love how Kiko Lab they said, you know, we don't want to be a wine bar. We don't want everybody to show up and just go Man, back and forth. Um, and I agree with that. And you know, that's you know, I'm I'm not here to you know talk about you know, how sleepy I am this morning, <laughs> even though I'm fine with, with you know, social phatic communication, um, perfectly fine. Um, c 
could you respond to that? I mean, I, I, I hope yeah, I'm sure. The yeah, point. it makes makes plenty of sense. Um, Fatic is one of my favorite words, by the way, um, uh, for an odd reason. Um, I'm word? part. Uh, what's that? What word, please? I couldn't. Fatic. Hear. What does it mean? Uh, P H A T I C. It means um, taking over behavior. Basically, <laughs> if we connect, um, uh, it's it's, it's kind of like. It's kind of like social grooming, actually. Um, uh, it's the little, it's the uh, little noise, noise stuff that that isn't that that you listen to a conversation and you hear people making little gestures, little vocal gestures, little uh, words of encouragement and stuff like that. Uh, it's not part of the con. Uh, it's not part of the content. It's actually a wrapper around the content. Um, <laughs> It has the function of maintaining the communication. It's kind of a protocol acknowledge. Uh, we're we're communicating. We're it's 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 the social grease aside yeah. from the content of the communication. Um, uh, Mark and Chuan and, and I are on similar wavelengths uh, because that makes a ton of sense to me, and and I've I, I've actually explain it to people back in the old days when we all used to use modems and they would do that whistle the the you know the, the whistle <laughs> sound when you when you got on the internet um the 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 literal like bits and bytes of that um it sounded like white noise because it kind of is noise and modems used to use a noise signal to keep the channel open basically and then they would wrap the data on top of the noise so if you just send the data um it gets you know weird things happen to it but if you make a lot of noise and then wrap signal into that you actually get the the signal across which is now i've over geeked it um but anyway fatic is the same same thing it's like carrier signal for for a modem um i like i've been when you in say hello there's no content and unfortunately, yeah. when you ask how are you, often you don't expect content. <laughs> it's How's your day? <laughs> um, oh, that's great. You are um, talking about the the nods, the smiles, the go, the quizzical looks, the go on, the the yeah. stuff that it keeps you know, the conversation going. Keeps the conversation the, going. Keeps it on the rails. Keeps the person knowing that you're receiving yeah, that we're, we're still in communication. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Now I forgot the sentence that it was used in. <laughs> Um, uh, Mark was talking about, you know, uh, I, I, I forget if it was because I got distracted by the word itself. I have a story about FATIC. Um, uh, but Mark was saying basically, you know, there's so there's the stuff that, that we all do in these calls. And that's kind of the interesting part of it, right? It's interesting that we're being human together. Pete, why the heck would you try to tokenize, you know, this? And, and a token isn't going to, the other thing Mark said is a token isn't going to give us project plans or goals or, you know, uh, work steps or any of that kind of stuff. Why, why would we do it? Um, uh, so, so one thing, Mark, um, uh, you, I, I think you, you described a, a fairly small set of people who would be interested and involved, right, in doing stuff, because. I'm, I'm saying, um in the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday OGM calls, the flotilla calls, I see Michael, Peter. You're looking at about 80% of, yeah. 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 And a few, few different people on, on Friday, but. Uh, um, so is that a good thing or a, a bad, as, or maybe a, a different thing? I can just say that that's too small of a, of a community to do. A, an, an that's what I was trying to say. It's like, if there was 15, that would be interesting. Um, and, and basically, you know, to, to segment and say, okay, here's one group that's going to split into three or five or, or seven or, or what have you to basically work in parallel on things. Um, oops. I, I was just reminded, I was talking with Bob Horn and, um, I was hoping to invite him to this MIMIX meetup because he's done a heck of a lot of work and a lot of the people who would come to MIMIX meetups were typically 
recent graduates from Stanford or MIT. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm reaching them or not, so I'm not sure if they're gonna be here, but, but basically they, they don't know a great deal of the history that exists that was you know worked on in the 70s and 80s about um, how to build an argument map um, successfully. And Bob Horn is you know somebody who insists on full complete sentences as nodes rather than words like happiness linked with a line to cooperation. Um, and he asked me, or he suggested that rather than have him talk and have to prepare something, that I provide an interviewer for him. And we kind of tick through our heads about who could interview successfully, except for, you know, not me, because I'm kind of going to be busy during the event. And we thought of all these people, and we go, no, no, they have their own thing going. Um, no, no, he has his own project. No, no, she has her own project. And that stuck in my head. It's like, huh, you know, yes, I have my own project. Yes, Mark Antoine has his own project. Um, certainly Michael does as well. And um, <laughs> it takes, you know, and with, with me, I also have a part-time job. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's kind of difficult to... Um, give more sometimes than, than the um, you know, time that we spend together you know, at seven in the morning, but, or at least for me, um, and I, I'm, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to bring all this all together and basically say, oh yes, 15 would be nice, but oh yes, I'm not criticizing that there's five of us here, six of us if Jerry were here, um, I'm observing that phenomenon. Yep. I think uh, 15 people in an in-group is, is probably still not enough. Um, it, it would be enough to like force the exercise, um, it, but it wouldn't be very fun or very interesting unless we were all economists. Um, what uh, size group are you, are you thinking of? Well, so that's, so, so real quickly, it, it becomes er, uh, uh, super OGM. Um, uh, so, um, uh, whoever we know from Kiko Lab, um, uh, uh, Vincent and, and his many connections and friends, um, OFC, uh, Metacogs. Um, and so partly having a, having a multi-use token, having a, a fungible token um, that's not, not tied to a small group, um, but is actually intergroup um, is part of the experiment. Um, and, and it's a way of engaging with other, other groups, right? You could go over to Metacogs and I, not everybody in Metacogs is gonna be interested, but one or two people, you could say, I would love to pay you um, 100 plex to come over and do blah, right? Um, I would I love to- have a, a, a better understanding of the experiment with that one notion of supra yeah and i th and that's that's just part of it i think you know the other part of it is playing around with understanding value and value exchange and, and things like that um yes stacy i was also if i could just bring the human part of it because i you know i watch really carefully and we always talk about trust and i do know a lot of people especially that are younger in their careers that, you know, we've kind of been taught, you know, don't give away our good ideas, someone will take it from you, all those kinds of things. And when you're working on something, at least if you're getting some sort of a token, you feel that if anything is going to come of it, you're in on the ground floor. So I think that there is a big emotional impact of having a community currency. That's, um, that's a, a really, a, a community currency and something that might appreciate, I guess. Um, uh, it's a really good observation, Stacey, and it's also one of the, um, it's a superpower uh, and also a, um, a super bad thing because it's, uh, because it's really easy. I, it, it, it crosses, once, once you, 
um, there's a thing that a lot of people are dealing with in, in the social good crypto space um, and also the social, well, the, the crypto space, uh, crypto and um, like SEC space, uh, Securities Exchange Commission. Um, as soon as it looks like something where people are either gambling or speculating, then, you know, it's, uh, spec it, it, it's wonderful for, um, for a young person to get involved and save some of their tokens from their activity. And lo and behold, later find out that it's worth a lot. Uh, crypto Venetians, right? Um, it's, it's a cool thing that <clears throat> a bunch of people who wandered into a random art gallery in Venice ended up being able to, you know, buy that really cool surfboard they wanted um, because of it. Um, but when you have people who are just doing it for that reason, um, it sours, it, it also turns bad and negative real fast, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Let me give you like a simple example. Let's say, so, you know, because Mark mentioned a lot of people have their own things going on. A lot of those things going on are people who speak for a living or are teaching something. So let's say for argument's sake, for me showing up, which I would want to do to support them anyway, and I'd want to learn, let's say I also get one token. I can then like accumulate my tokens and maybe I'd go to you, Pete, and say, I need help with this. Now you would probably do it for me for free anyway, but how much nicer is it and easier for me to say, I have these to give you. Yep. So I, I just think there's so many benefits that they're so little, we don't notice them, but yeah, they're important. Um, re reclaiming, um, reclaiming money as um, a, a social thing rather than a capitalism, I think is, is really good. I was about to thank both of you, um, Pete and Stacy, for you know being patient and helping me understand this, and then reclaiming money. I mean, I've been playing in my mind with community currency, community value, community cohesion, community resilience, community expansion, community contraction. I mean, what what are the actual values that OGM is hoping to build, which not only are individual virtues, but small group virtuals, big vir small group virtues, big group virtues, global, oh shit, we're burning the planet, let's change our behavior virtues. Um, um and and is there a line from from one to the other and and how does currency you know changing money work in that and you know i'm still i'm, I'm listening and i hope not to derail conversations and it's coming time to uh, eight but um but thank you for help helping me understand I'm, I have a question just that that is kind of existential just about you know currency and how how one can keep any currency from you know devolving into dynamics of I mean you know what you said Stacy is beautiful and at the same time, um, there's, okay, now um, I know, I mean, if, if let's say we were all aware of the transactions that are going on between us, which we might not be, I don't know how we set it up, but, you know, oh, I know that um, Pete has, you know, more community currency right now because, you know, he did that thing for Stacy and I need some community currency because I want to do this project that I don't have enough for. So I'm gonna go to Pete because I know Pete needs this service to say, will you do it for this? And, you know, I mean, it's just gonna be a marketplace, right? I mean, potentially, and, and not that it isn't, among a bunch of people who have like minds and and higher purpose, but 
if we were doing the same thing with, you know, if we if we had, you know, UBI in this group and we were receiving fiat currency and then trading it around and then pulling some of it out and using it to buy groceries, I mean, how how is it intrinsically? You know, its form is different than money, but how does the dynamic it creates not be a, a market scarcity, you know, dynamic? It's, it's a really good question. Um, I had the same kind of thing, it, like, so great. We're just, uh, you know, we're, um, we're recapitulating the rise of, of capitalism, you know. Let's let's wind back to you know three thousand years ago or something like that when when money was like safe and good. <laughs> and then I you know a banca, a table in the market square, <laughs> all exchange tokens that represent I, what we're going to trade to each other. <laughs> I, I think the thing is, is it's it's just um, part of it is intentionality and part of it is is observing. If you if you take it out of Let's do the same experiment with with USD, right? That's um, and and then everybody like collapses into okay. Well, I guess I've got to optimize my you know rate re re return on investment and you know um, uh, if it's a if it's a different token, um, I think we can be a little bit more circumspect about it because you you get to play with the value the the exchange value to fiat, right? It's like when you start, it doesn't have any exchange value, right? Because nobody Nobody has put any fiat in the system. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can regulate kind of uh, with different monetary policy. <laughs> um, uh, you can you can regulate you know flow of, of uh, fiat in and out and uh, inflation rates and that kind of stuff. Um, so you can actually make it just just by like simple simple economic. Um, manipulation and I don't mean that in a bad way I just mean it in a technical way you can actually change the monetary policy so people tend to keep their money in the system or they tend to like blow it away wow. and you know and you lose all the value or whatever so I and and it, it just takes um, it, it takes you out of the mindset of, of dollars you know and puts you in a, a different mindset where you can play a little bit better experiment a little bit more I, I think a big part of it is intentionality. What do we want to have happen with this currency that you know we screwed up with with um, fiat? So Just see, throwing this out because I'm I don't know. What about if you had if if part of the rule was you had to spend a certain amount within the system? Would that? Yeah. How would that? Um, uh, I don't know how it would work offhand because I I don't do economic system in my head um, but yes that's that would be a thing to, to play with right um, another thing to play with is your money um, your money gets worth less out over time like if you're just sitting on it um, uh, it slowly evaporates uh, and if you exchange it it doesn't evaporate so you can keep the money flowing by doing having a rule like that right um, the reason I the reason I say giving it away, is because there is something really powerful that happens when you give stuff away, mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah. it builds and it grows. But but that's actually uh, something that you're more likely to do with the self depreciating money. The self depreciation, what Pete was describing, is a mechanism that's been used, that's been advocated. It's it's a kind of built-in inflation to avoid scissorization and avoid accumulation of money and uh, to keep the money flowing. So if, you, if it, the, your money depreciates, you'd better st spend it. And then maybe you'd better give it. I mean, that's, and that, yeah. that's interesting, Stacey, you're right. In, and then we could have interesting mechanisms whereby the value kind of resets if you give it or something like that. It would have more money as a gift than as a spend. Like maybe we could make it, um, you know, that it's um, the money that you spend for charitable reasons is produces a benefit. Sorry, I'm, I'm making a tax deductibility. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> a 
can't, I can't come up with the analogy exactly. Um, I, I like it. Um, I have a quick question, Pete, about the um, a good, good something house. Good, good workhouse. Yeah. Good workhouse. Um, I will look them up on the web. Uh, you said they have an event coming up soon. Um, as an example, to kind of watch these processes as implemented by other folks, um, what would you suggest I, I poke my attention towards? Um, so the, here's the web page. Uh, their, their event is called Ground Baking. Um, and that, that'll give you the, the basics. Um, let me take 20 or 30 seconds and, and look. There's, there's actually a really good uh, presentation. And I think it's, um, I think it's public now. So um, I, I wonder, I shouldn't probably try to, um, uh, I, this, so I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, the community discord and as I understand it, it's not quite a public discord. And so I don't, I, I don't feel comfortable inviting people to it. Um, you can get yourself invited to it by, I, I guess I'm not enough of a community participant. I, I'm, I'm a kind of a friend and advisor a little bit um, and, and not quite a community participant. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, I don't see a, a password on this. Um, so uh, this Notion page has one thing on it, which is the crowdfund deck, um, which is a really good look at where they've been and where they're going. Um, and um, makes me makes me really sad to look at this and think of where we've gotten to with OGM um, with probably a lot more. They, they've I, well, not not to diminish what they've done. Um, they put a lot of work in uh, to get to this point, but we've put a lot of work in, and we don't have a, a nice presentation like this to show, um, and we don't have, and we're not raising you know, 250 ETH to, um, to give a bunch away. Um, I just wanted to point out in term in, in linking, um, Pete, what you said about Santa Monica, something that maybe some of us know about, it's called a hole in space. It's a 1980, um, artwork by Santa Monica artists, um, uh, Kit Galloway and Sherry Rabinowitz. And they basically stuck these big video walls in a camera and they basically created Zoom in 1980 and they didn't really tell anybody. They just connected New York to LA and people would show up and kind of like try to, you know, there was sound and, and they could like speak to each other. And then eventually, um, because, you know, we still had... Uh, things called telephones that you picked up and you paid long distance charges for. Yep. Um, people would show up and basically say, hey, be here at this time and we'll talk to each other. And so all these people came together and, and you know, saw each other and talked to each other. And um, uh, that, um, what is that? Um, 41 years ago? Is now what we're talking on right now. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, uh, time. That's be uh, beautiful, Mark. Thank you. It's a good connection. One of the things this conversation has uh, helped me understand is that I actually know a lot about this. I, I, I think I don't know very much about community currency or, or monetary stuff, um, but I actually do. And so in talking to people, um, it, it does us both a disservice for me to go, oh, well, of course you know all about community currencies because it's like, yeah. 
which brings me back to a uh, question that I, could you very simply, for those of me that doesn't know, <laughs> the difference between um, work stake and uh, what proof was it? Of work. Proof of work and yeah. proof, of proof of stake, work. yeah. Um, uh, yes, let me do that real quick. And I'm gonna also pop a Wikipedia link into Ithaca hours. Uh, Ithaca, New York was one of the, um, uh, one of the really early experiments with um, a com community currency. Um, and it, it, it's the kind of classic one. Um, um, uh, the, um, a, a way to think about um, a, a crypto token or, you know, kind of just a token, um, uh, is it's it's not unlike. It's funny. I want to I want to say Federal Reserve um, and um, the gold standard and all that kind of stuff. And all that made sense like forty years ago, fifty years ago. And now it's like, <laughs> what the Federal Reserve? <laughs> gold? I don't know what you're talking about, Pete. Um, but anyway, um, uh, and maybe it's a little bit distracting to think of it that way. Anyway, but but basically what. Um, there's there's a, a cloud of value called Bitcoin, right? And there's a cloud of value called Ethereum, um, uh, and a cloud of um, value called Tezos. So basically, um, uh, you need a way to prove that you own part of that cloud of value, um, and. Uh, Bitcoin, the first big cryptocurrency, the way you prove that was you basically, you, you kind of in a way paid for the value, I guess. So the, the crypto part of it um, is just a bunch of math that helps you do the proof. But then you actually also need to have a reason to have gotten that value. Um, and for Bitcoin, it's just, I basically, it, it's just, um, I had my computer solving a mathematical puzzle for lo a long time. Um, and so therefore I claim part of the, the, the big cloud of value and that's called mining um, because it's kind of similar to if you spend a lot of time, you know, with pickaxes and, and um, pans and stuff like that, you'd have gold, right? Kind of the same thing. It's kind of like, Bitcoin was a big vein of gold and people can go in and just do a lot of work um, and with their computer and get some of the value out of it, mine it. Um, and that's proof of work. And that's proof of work. As opposed yeah. to proof of stake, which is? Proof of stake is, um, uh, proof of work is, is bad um, or good, depending on, on how you're looking at it. Um, uh, proof of work can be bad because uh, you have to run your computer hot for a long time uh, to solve all the, the puzzles. Um, and you have a kind of a competition. If, if more and more people do it to make it fair, um, the puzzles get harder and harder. And the puzzles have gotten extremely hard and they take a lot of computing power. Um, computing power takes electricity. Electricity takes burning coal usually or burning, you know, or um, hydroelectric or volcanoes or, you know, whatever. So proof of work can be bad um, for the environment. So people invented proof of stake where it's like, I'm not going to prove that I should own a chunk of that value with work. I'm going to um, stake, I'm going to lock up um, some of my, my I, some of my value. I'm going to take some value that I've got from US dollars or some other currency. And I'm going to say um, the value cloud is made bigger by me putting a piece in it and leaving it there. Um, I'm not going to touch it, um, but then I get some of the, the reward for helping the, the ecosystem, the, the value cloud, the cloud have value, basically. So it sounds like putting your money in a bank and getting interest. It's, yeah, it's a lot, a lot like a CDA, yeah. Thank you. And sometimes you, yeah, yeah. There's on top of that, 
there's also systems where you can, can get actual interest. Staking is a little bit different. You get staking rewards, it's called. Um, but, and the, the reason you have to have something, something big, like a bunch of US dollars or a bunch of CPU time is because if you didn't do it that way, everybody would get, you know, everybody would say, well, I want, you know, 50% of all the Bitcoin things and I just deserve it because I'm cute, right? Um, so making it turn, turn into physical something where it's not just that I'm cute, I've also spent, you know, 100,000 hours of CPU time. So then I get this, this value, right? If everybody competes basically for a piece of the value by saying, I'm staking a big chunk of value for me um, in, into this, you know, into this cloud. Um, so all the, all the cool, a lot of the cool innovation has gone on uh, Bitcoin and especially Ethereum for smart contract stuff. And it's all proof of work still. Ethereum is trying really hard to get over a proof of stake um, and it'll make it at some point, but, but there's a second generation or it's subsequent generations of tokens said, ah, the, proof, the whole proof of work thing is silly and let's do proof of stake instead. And so there's a bunch of cool stuff going on in proof of stake, but not too many, not, not the right kind of infrastructure for community currency too much as, as or it's, it's there. It's not as easy to use as an Ethereum one. Just for completeness, not that anybody here cares, um, the, the way I would do this on an Ethereum chain, on the Ethereum chain would be to have an ERC-20 token, it's called. Um, basically, it's kind of the functional equivalent of like a dollar. And there's, somebody's already written the code for that. And actually, many people have written the code for that. Um, and I could just grab the code and use it. Um, it's a little bit that um, uh, Tezos has uh, FA 1.2, I think it is, um, which has the same structural stuff, but there isn't, there's much less code written for it. Um, Thank you. I'm going to drop off and, and see you uh, around, Mark. Get working happen here. Um, good to see everybody. Yeah, sorry, I was a bit uh, distracted. I still <laughs> concerned with my DMX setup. And yeah, please. Um, uh, I just uh, pinged yes, I saw. Password. I'm so uh, give me uh, give me a username password. I'll add it to my LDAP. I'm actually now adding an LDAP UX. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, one does. As one does. <laughs> uh, Stacy, I will uh, activate my phone about later. Uh, later talking with you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Mark Antoine, um, is, is what you're doing um, uh, neophyte accessible or is it, does it take um, uh, coding? There's docu it's documented, uh, you know, it's not, this is, this is just, I'm installing someone else's system. They documented yeah. it. Uh, yeah. It's just what I'm doing is making sure that we have private spaces so we can all play with it without screwing up one another's data on the one hand. And hopefully we're able to connect our personal data as well, hopefully. And that's why I'm going through the trouble of making this uh, multi-user setup, which is not as trivial as it should be. Cool. Well, I, I would like to be part of the experiment if, if, if I so, so, if so I am DM, DM me a user a username password and I'll add you. Okay. It, uh, okay. Go in the Mattermost maybe. So okay. We're connected to Mattermost. And, yeah. um, should we should we keep using Flotilla or switch to Maps Mapping or? I mean, this these this has to be DM because you're giving me your pass uh, a password you're choosing for that system, right? Maybe he's one of those you know uh, crazy hippie guys that's so like. Passwords for, are for everybody, man. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm uh, I'm uh, a bit serious about passwords. <laughs> I'm like, oh, or you can also email me a GPG encrypted uh, password. <laughs> so, so DM me a password is the, the low end of the scale, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the crappy version. I, I, I'd rather you GPG encrypted me. I'll give you my public key if you're interested. <laughs> how, how about Signal? Is it a happy medium? Sign, Signal is a perfectly happy medium. But yeah. <laughs> I apologize for, for dropping off before I had a, uh, a technical issue. Um, and I was really sad. I'm going to have to go back and look at the recording to, to finish your proof of stake explanation because you, you are a good explainer for you, so. You know, yes, you know. I agree. That's and thank nice. you, Michael, because I'm glad it wasn't just me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think a lot of people would want to hear the explanation. I mean, even when you've heard the explanation, you know, it's good to hear the explanation. It's so, yeah. 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 I think I'll have to re-listen to that talk. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> So, uh, now you got now you got nothing but uh, no no. no That's you know now. So so Zoom needs a thing where it doesn't highlight the speaker. It it needs to highlight the person with the the expression who's about to say something, right? Because I'm trying to read Stacy's expression. I'm in gallery view, so we're all kind of about the same size. And I'm yeah. like, what's she gonna say? What's like? No, reason? it's sort of like it's sort of like. Again, Michael mentioned like being cognizant that we're recording. Uh, <laughs> you, and we're, we're working off of uh, um, passes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, sorry. But, it, it just made me think of something somewhat unrelated, which was that I was um, doing a uh, Pilates session over Zoom and I, um, I did something with my hand and it produced a, um, a wave in the corner or a thumbs up or something like that, that I realized that Zoom has an automatic function to read your physical gestures. I don't know if it's going to do it. It was on a different device, really? um, but it must have been something that they added, and I didn't realize it. But yeah. there could be, uh, you know, phatic reading. Yeah. So that. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> this person is taking a deep breath as if they're about to speak. Yeah. So I'm going to unmute them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you can set your preferences for auto unmute and I'm not um, I'm looking forward to it kind of <laughs> or not yeah actually it's it's going to be really dorky for a while and then, yeah and then then it'll probably get good yeah that, that moment when you're yelling to your you know significant other in the other room that you realize you have to have your auto thing turned off or you're gonna yeah 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 another thing I'm looking forward to is um I one of the, the big graphics companies um, as, as kind of a demo, I, it was actually real technology. Maybe they're trying to sell the technology, but they, they figured out a way to like hyper compress um, video streams by, by simulating them, by making them virtual, virtualizing them basically. So they, they, they have a camera that recognizes your face and, and takes it apart. And, um, and then they just send the facial expressions, you know, like the code for the facial expressions. And then they rebuild a, your face um, to, you know, on everybody else's screen. Um, so sending the code for facial expressions is very small compared to all the pixels that you have to send to, you know, like get the look of the face. And then you can do other things like background removal or whatever, right? Or fancy hats and glasses. And... Yeah, but how it also be what, great. I'm sorry. What, what scares me about that is, so like, I don't know if you just noticed two minutes ago, I had some strange facial expressions. Now you don't know what that was, but what it actually was is first I got something on my screen that said the call has been muted. So I started to tell you, and then I realized that I had a call coming in. So I had to just, you know, end the call. So the point I'm trying to make is a computer's not gonna know what I'm reacting to. 
only if somebody says, Stacy, what did you did you mean to say something? And then I could explain what happened. That's always my concern. The, the uh, so you're worried that the computer is going to misread your facial expressions and well, people do that too. Yeah. <laughs> people do that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's partly why why Michael was bringing it up because of that tension between <laughs> what the computer thinks it knows and what it, it should know and and yeah. what we think it thinks it should know. Well, it's, you could also have, I mean, when you think about that, that notion that you're talking about, you could really strip down, obviously, to emoji level, um, yeah. you know, somewhere between actual video, real time video, and a series of emojis that you're clicking on that say, I'm listening and blah, 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 but yeah. you're just controlling that with facial expressions. Yeah. Um, and you can, just the way you can put up your, your still photograph avatar, you could say, leave me on wrapped listening expression because I'm yeah. gonna do something, but yeah. it's less disruptive than going away. But yeah. Also, you know, allows for some cheating. Yep, but that'll be the interesting part of it, you know. Ah, shoot, I've got to yell at the dog, you know, and, and the yeah. computer is going to like not not miss a beat, right? You're still looking like, oh, mm, you know, <laughs> while in the background, you're like. Set me on nod for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, other stuff to talk about? Um, have you guys talked lately about just one conversation that I think we were having, I don't remember if it was a Tuesday or a Wednesday conversation, but um, there was a conversation about um, uh, what the sort of branding um, weaving the world and, um, and the idea of somebody doing a text, I'm sorry, a um, fabric weaving graphic of some kind. And I had actually had some logo thoughts that I was playing with, but, um, but wondered if, if that had already, if that train had already left the station and there was something going on after that. No, add it, right? Mm -hmm. it, nothing's been decided. Okay. Correct, Pete? <laughs> um, I feel like you would know better than me, but I, I, nothing that, yeah, I don't know of anything either. I mean, you know, Jerry could be way off and deep with, with somebody um, knitting all No, he's time. not. Okay. okay. Um, the, the, the fabric thing reminds me of a really cool um, game design thing, which was not about fabric at all but it had this really cute look and I thought I could find it quickly but I guess I can't oh here it is um, this is uh, in the I guess I'll, sh I'll share my um, Uh, in, in, the, in the space of things that don't look techy, even though they kind of are, um, uh, these, these I thought were really cool. Um, this is for a game, some, some in, indie developers developing, but these are all renders. They're not, you know, mm. they're not real wood. Um, mm. And uh, so in the game, you can actually move everything and play with everything. And it's a really interesting look. Yeah, much more, yeah. much more tactile and much more, you know, feels like warm and inviting. Yeah, that was really cool. I'll put the link to that in the yeah. chat. I think I want to go back to um, Pete, you and I were talking a little bit and um, it was about figuring out like how much something costs per episode. And I said that maybe if we put everything all in together, we would see that 
um, it divides up differently. And let's see if I could be clear on what I'm trying to say. Okay, so Mark had mentioned earlier how everybody has their own thing. And if you could just imagine for a minute that OGM is like the school of tomorrow and all these people, they have their own specialties, but they also have their own, you know, they're also a bunch of smart people that like to come in and they have different levels of knowledge on different things. But let's say there was one main structure, almost like the production company, and you can pay with your community currency to help all those other members, but in a way that becomes cheaper because it's almost like it's almost like they're a cooperative. And so if you're coming into the workstation and you know you have a few hours of work, often what happens is because the social component is so strong, you're gonna stay longer and you're gonna do more. And the one thing that I think is kind of like, I, and I understand your frustration with other places, but what I'm thinking is that what OGM has a value is different than what other groups may have. And that is, like a very diversified realm of expertise in different things. And getting the tech people and the people that are non-tech more integrated, I think is really important. I don't know if that's making any sense, but- um, it, it makes sense and the frustration frustration I've got is not so much that we haven't done anything, but that we've got so much potential that we're not taking, that, that we're not cap, capturing. So you're right, OGM has got, you know, a, an interesting broad network of, and, and a lot of diversity. Um, and we don't structure activities in a way that helps people express their creativity and express their you know, ability to like work, you know, on whatever and things like that. So it kind of leaks out, you know, um, as a, as an OGM part person, I think this happens to me and I think it happens to a lot of people. It's like, well, you know, today I'm, I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to be figuring out DMX, right. Or, um, I'm going to be writing recent changes code for massive wiki, or, you know, I'm going to be helping somebody learn how to use a crypto wallet or I'm going to be editing, you know, copy editing somebody's, um, you know, essay or something like that. Those are all things that I do. And OGM as a container doesn't really have a container for that happening socially, right? Um, so. So yesterday I was on a call with Brian H. I can't, I think, hi, I can't pronounce his last name. And, um, and Jerry, and, you know, he mentioned the phrase TV lineup, which is exactly how I look at some of these calls. And if not just these calls, but calls of our members were organized into almost like a TV station, I think that would be so helpful. And when I think of weaving the world, I'm hoping that that's what it's going to model. I don't, you know, that, that's my which, hope. Which part of the TV lineup? The, the fact that it's all on one page somewhere or that? The or fact the that, well, I, you know, I, I could be wrong. I may be taking the meaning of what it meant for me, but the fact that it's all on one page, it's somehow connected, but then it goes off into different areas, but there's a place where like, I want to be able to like wake up in the morning and turn on and say, oh, so, there's going to be a call with Pete over here at 10 o'clock, but Michael's doing this over here, you know, and see where I want to stop in. Um, it, for what it's worth, it doesn't change much week, week to week. Um, we could do a better job of setting up, you know, what's going to happen on Flotilla Friday or what's going to happen on Massive Wiki or what's going to happen on Thursday, OGM. Right, but what I'm saying in terms of weaving the world, and when you talk about um, having a currency that can be used in other places, mm -hmm. 
I'm also thinking about having people outside being able to come in to that yeah. lineup. Yeah. Um, just, oh. Go ahead, Michael. Just gonna say, it just struck me, Stacey, as you were talking and did something also you said earlier. Can you talk a little uh, louder? Oh, sure. Can you hear Thank me okay? You. Yes. I, okay. Um, I, um, I was just thinking back, uh, to a food co-op that I helped, you know, launch many, many years ago. And the sort of inadvertent skills banking that ended up being involved in that. I mean, we were all there for the purpose of having a community food co-op and getting good food for good prices in our neighborhood and supporting local farmers and like that. But you know, at a regular food co-op, you put in a certain amount of hours. Well, there, there are a few things. You, you, you contribute a, a stake of some kind at the beginning to help get things off the ground. Um, and then you put in different kinds of hours. Um, and some people are just, you know, bagging groceries and some people are, are doing this and that, you know, and I did a bunch of graphic design at the beginning because that was a thing that I could do. And the fact that we have so many skills in whatever we want to call the community, the, the world we're weaving, lowercase everything, but, you know, OGM flotilla, you name it. Um, that I wonder if in the realm of community currency, there isn't some kind of skills banking exchange, and maybe, maybe I'm stating the obvious, and maybe this is what you were thinking with um, our, our own community crypto. Um, but somehow when Stacy, when you were just talking, it made me think like, there are definitely people in this group that are good at things that I'm not, that are, you know, of value to me, almost independent of, of the community and the community's efforts. And if we were able to sort of contribute and derive adjacent benefits within some, some sane limit. Like, you know, we all say, okay, we're, you know, we're giving, we're, we're setting up a stake in this thing by saying, okay, I'm, I'm donating or, 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 I don't know what the term would be, but you know, this participating. The same, <laughs> participating, but but participating at I'm pledging um, to participate to the tune of you know two hundred hours over the course of this length of time. So nobody can you know corral me and say, hey, you've got to drop everything and spend the next week doing this thing for me, but that that is banked it's sort of like time banking um and we're able to um yeah we're able to to weave together our skills in service of the community and potentially adjacent projects i don't know um, um a community currency does that yeah As long as we're so dreaming. Is that, is that, what? I was going to say, as long as we're dreaming, I have one more, one more dream that I'd like. I would love for there to be an open Zoom room at all times with at least one person just hanging out in there for anybody that just needs to talk. Just even if it's for five minutes, they got a bad call, they just need to speak, you know, they just want to talk. Because, and a lot of us, help ours, you know, like we can heal ourselves just through talking, but we just need somebody to bounce it off of. And to me, 
that should be part of everyday life, that there's always, you know, a community room that you could stop into. I like it. I mean, I think that it's funny because we talked about that, you know, many, many months ago um, when I hadn't been here long, I was like talking about the sort of the, the Thursday meeting being like the, the very open, um, like ch church, you know, we talked about, but also like the notion of um, like church and like, you know, 12 step programs or something, there's a sense that that resource is always there and how we functionally, whether it's a Mattermost channel, which is pretty much always there for people or, or as you're saying, Stacy, a real, zoom room that you can drop in and of course the larger the group community gets to be the more likely you're going to find somebody else there and you know maybe the commitment to somebody always being there is something that the community currency would have to support so that like you know there's a little ping that goes off and says somebody needed or, or people have set hours. Everybody agrees that, you know, I'm going to be alone in the Zoom room if there's nobody else there um, for, you know, two hours a month. And between us all, you know, it's always man. Or shift. you could have two people there together. And this way, at least you always have two people. There's something sure, going sure. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. And by the way, just to point out the dynamics in a call when there's three of us like this is very different than other, you know, other amounts. <laughs> For sure. It's also a big difference between two and three. Yeah. And you it's know. funny, I, I was looking at a clip. Um, it was a call. I don't know how many of you, if either of you knew Michael Josefowitz. Neither one of you. He, he's a really, he was a really interesting man. And I will share, there's a one-on-one a -on -one video with him and Sam Han. But um, without going into his story, I was watching his clip and he was just talking about there should always be, you know, the, the speaker, the listener, and that goes back and forth, but how important it is to have that observer there. And yeah. I fully, fully, fully agree. And I, I like being that role of the observer, you know, as well as the other roles. But I think there always should be an observer. Um, going going back to TV lineup. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do show and tell a little bit. Um, maybe just this one browser window. And um, Stacey, I wonder if this is the Michael oh, Joseph. Yes, voice. yes, that is him. Yes. Um, uh, there's a, there is a web page on openglobalmind.com, uh, which is, you know, current projects under construction. So here's a TV lineup. <laughs> so we also need more stuff. Um, you know, for each one, it would be nice to have uh, the vision and the current activities, what help they need, what matter most channel they, they hang out in, what is the main contact, um, pointed to their web page, pointed to their GoFundMe or their, their funding page. Um, uh, Vincent uh, also kindly set up um, a calendar for OGM on Trove. Um, you can see right now there's one thing on it, Flotilla Fridays. and, and it's a little bit tricky. So each of these, the, the, the challenge that we ended up finding is that it's hard to keep stuff up to date, basically. Um, and there's a bunch of this kind of work that, that we experimented with doing and haven't, haven't figured out how to make it continue to happen. So another community currency to keep things up to date, you know, um, would be awesome. Um, 
similarly, um, a long time ago, um, a year ago, I guess, a year ago, I set up an experiment on the OGM forum. Nobody uses OGM forum anymore, but um, uh, I actually created a few, uh, I, I created a, a category called OGM marketplace to, for us to exchange goods and services. Mm -hmm. So we had a couple things go back and forth. We had like three or four, three, I think. Um, Beaver Porter actually did get sold, uh, which was really cool. Um, although it didn't end up working out anyway, but um, George Poor and the free book um, didn't get a lot of, yeah, I don't know, 128 is not bad. Um, this is another interesting one, uh, Bentley and web and app development. Hmm. Um, yeah. Another thing that, you know, OGM forum itself needed more, well, it needed a few things. One of them was actually, it, it fell down when we didn't have enough of an OGM to make decisions about OGM, actually. How did OGM start? Um, Jerry said, there's, uh, there shall be open global mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there somebody it's, else who was like, I, I feel like even-, even Yeah, it, it started with um, Matt Saya and um, I think maybe Hank, I forget. Um, it started with, um, it started with Jerry and um, Matt and a few other people around that. Um, uh, actually in fairly private conversations, I think. And then, you know, Jerry, I think it was, well, I, it, it was actually all of them. It wasn't just Jerry. Um, you know, this should be more open, more public. Um, I felt like there was one person who I saw, what, I don't know if it was at the first meetings I, I was at, which were six months in or um, or going back and looking at some earlier recordings, but there was somebody who seemed to take a fairly strong role in some early meetings who I've never seen again. <laughs> and I can't remember. Um, that sounds to me like Nancy White. That was a guy. Yeah. Um, oh, I'll have to go back and look and see. Maybe it's somebody I now know, but forgot, didn't, didn't know at that point. And Maybe. And didn't show up for a while. Yeah. Maybe it was actually Matt or Hank. Uh, my email history goes back to June 17th, 2020. Well, anyway, I think that we there are some great conversations in the, in this community. And my TV lineup would be a talk show on every single every single hour. There's some sort of talk show going on that I can plug into. Yep. And you know, actually, one of the things that could be done, Stacy, that I think if if the TV program. I mean, sometimes my calendar is this um, when I when I can make the time for it to be. Um, it's like uh, you know, flotilla, um, uh, collaborative tech alliance, um, humane tech to center for humane technology. You know, like there's these events new public, there are these events that are all kind of around the same stuff, but a program of when they all are. So you can figure out, gee, there's, you know, there's, there's a conflict with, um, with this one this week. So, you know, maybe I'll, I'll skip my OGM Thursday check-in so I can be part of the like unfinished conference um, but more of a, of a general program of all the things that are going on in the world with, you know, with obviously our, our emphasis on our overlap, which is the OGM, moving the world flotilla stuff, um, but things that are adjacent that we would be 
interested in because we could we could fill your dance card Stacey even even if they're not <laughs> you know get something on your whole program if you want um, more more show and tell real quick mm -hmm. um, this is the OGM lunch call Gee, I'm noticing be... something about that. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think it. I think it was Hamilton. Who yeah, was Hamilton's the probably the one you're thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. How is Judy? We haven't seen Judy lately. We, we have not. No. Um, I think she's doing okay. She's just doing other stuff. Yeah. Well, I will have a, something at the top of the hour, and I should probably give myself a, a little bit of a break. So. Uh, sounds good. Let um, me drop. Um, I, I'll drop a link to that. Um, did, did did either of you save the um, chat? Because I fell off, and there were a bunch of links early on, and I don't have the chat. Uh, yeah, I've got the chat. You're gonna put that in Mattermost, right? Because I can't save yeah. it on my phone. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so Jerry was thinking about Open Global Mind in 2018, it looks like. Um, hmm. And then that first call was uh, June last year, I think. And one of the early links was that um, brain link to early OGM design questions. So how do we make sure, because this, this is, I guess, why I even come here in the first place. Um, in gathering all this collective intelligence, how do we ensure that, you know, we're getting the perspective of like, I don't know, the 15 year old kid, the, you know, the person in Africa, how, like what are we, to me, that's what the social part's about for me. That That's how I think, you know, that's the, my part that I can play. Um, but I have to say, Pete, I don't know if you remember this, but one time I showed up at Kiko Lab and you put up the screen and I saw my name there and I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> do you remember that? I don't. Was that a good <laughs> surprise shocked. or a bad surprise? No, 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 it was just surprise. I guess it was a good surprise. It was like, wow, I matter. <laughs> you know, it was really nice. It was surprising though. Um, early design questions, how do we make diversity into OGM? How do we make, I can't hear that well. Uh, how do we bake diversity into OGM? Yes. So it's been a question. <laughs> we haven't been doing great on it for a, a while. The more we have the discussions and the more personal conversations, the greater chance we have of making that happen. Well, I, I do think that one of the things that fosters that is, is more, more activity in other groups and exposing each other to other groups that are more diverse than we are. And like we had a really pretty intense and sometimes contentious conversation about it that I, I think Pete led you to not be not want to participate at one point. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I think it was almost a year ago that um, I was in Mozilla Fest, which was like hugely, hugely younger, more, you know, more diverse in every way. Um, I mean, their lack of diversity actually had to do with not having that many people who were our age, but there were some. Um, and, you know, it's like, why are we not there so that more and, and interacting with more of those people so we could bring more of those people here and just kind of evening it all out. Um, 
but the the TV program having shows that are are not produced by us and not featuring us and showing us other people that we can meet and socialize with would be a, a great step. Well, one of the things that I see, which is why I try to like for a while, I was only staying with younger people is because often, not so much in this group, but it, it does happen. Older people want to tell you what's not gonna work. They don't allow for, you know, it's like as creatures, we all want choice. And yet that's the first thing we try to take away from others, even if we're doing it in a well-meaning, you know, for a well-meaning reason. And younger people, they are just, they don't have those same restrictions that we have, like anything is possible. And I think maybe they don't want any older people around because they're tired of grandpa telling them <laughs> this isn't the way we do it. Get off my lawn. <laughs> well, thanks, folks. Okay. It was great. I'm glad right. it wasn't canceled. I look forward to these. <laughs> it was a fun <laughs> call, even though I, I probably talked too long. Not at all. Never. Always good. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.